Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. We were working on the um, um, project we have going on here, trying to get an understanding of uh, when the scripture says eating with the blood. Um, this is the Sabbath day, and I kind of work and I kind of woke up thinking about, you know, how it is we're expected to eat meat without eating the blood. When Stacy had a question, although unrelated, we thought we'll do a class on it. What was your question again, sir? The question I asked um, was where I'm hearing a lot of um, people talk about how we are not supposed to eat meat. Meat at all. Right. And I was wondering um, where at in the scripture or where do they support this doctrine from? Eating meat. And I believe the answer comes from this book called The Gospel of the Holy Twelve. All right. I've never heard of that book before. Actually, I've never heard of it either. Come on. Man. As you know, I have been collecting scriptural documents for about 25 years now. All scriptural texts that I could find, I have been collecting it and, um, hardcover copy because you know i'm expecting the internet to go down in a year now and so i wanted to have these books um for when that day comes but even though i'm looking at books like the pseudopographa the lost books of the bible the forgotten books of eden the dead sea scrolls the Apocryphal New Testament, the Apocryphal Old Testament, all kinds of books here. None of them actually contain this so-called gospel of the Holy Twelve. Right. In 25 years of studying scripture, I've never really heard or found this book listed amongst any other scripture. So I was very intrigued when I first heard about this book. One of the commenters uh, a few years ago uh, tried to um, introduce me to this book um, uh, many years ago. And being that it was the first time I had heard about it, you know, I went in and jumped in it, hoping that I was going to find some scripture. And is that the book that you actually purchased? No, um, I really only got to find it online. I went to google and did a search for the gospel of the holy 12 and i found that this uh particular pdf this one apparently was translated uh by osley or jim brooks or somebody translated this uh gospel of the holy 12 i found this pdf and i started reading it and one of the first things that i found was contradictions is that dealing with the eating of the blood or just contradictions in general? Well, it's actually eating of the meat. Like, for instance, here in Lectern 1, I guess this would be chapter 1. In the very first chapter, down in the fifth verse, I believe. Um, matter of fact, let me just let you read it. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall neither eat flesh, meats, nor drink strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Now, here is a contradiction. Well, here is what we could consider additional information, not necessarily a contradiction, because it's saying that the Messiah never ate meat. Right. Thing is, we never hear about this in Scripture anywhere else. Nowhere else in the Scripture does it ever say that the Messiah didn't eat meat. Right. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we look over in the Gospels, the four Gospels, um, during the time of the Passover, we see that the Messiah actually uh, partook in the Passover lamb. Right. He actually ate the Passover lamb there at what we call the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper. Right. That's what the Last Supper was, was the, the Passover meal, the eating of the Passover lamb. And so during that meal, we see the Messiah say that he wouldn't drink wine with them at that time. But there was no mention that he wouldn't actually eat the meat, which if what this gospel of the 12 was saying was true, then he definitely would have pointed that out and said, hey, I'm not going to eat this meat with you guys. Right. He said that. He would um, wait and drink the wine with them 
at another time, but he did not mention eating of the lamb at all. Yeah, and then like in Matthew 26, you see that his disciples, you know, they talk with him before they even decided to even go kill this lamb. Okay. So he was our, our uh, Messiah was a part of all of this eating of the Passover lamb. It would have been a very big deal. That's kind of what the festival was all about. So to think that the Messiah didn't eat meat would also believe that he actually failed to eat the Passover lamb, which would actually put him in a sin state, uh, actually made him closer to a Gentile than our Messiah. But one other thing you should notice, the person who reads the scripture should notice that it's actually mixing the vow of the Nazarite here. Yeah, I couldn't necessarily think i'm like okay does this have something to do with samson yeah this strong um, drink part here yeah yeah this is similar to what you read about in samson where he um had the vow or he was under the spirit from birth and it was primarily because of this so-called strong drink he wasn't allowed to eat anything from the grape so essentially what this translator has done and i'm gonna, I'm gonna blame it on a translator because i'm not really sure um, the source of this scripture yet. So I'll lean on, so I'll blame my own understanding first. And when I can't reconcile the, the scripture with that, then I'll look at the translator who seems to have taken liberties, adding this so-called meat to the vow of the Nazarite saying somehow that the eating of meat or the lack of eating of meat is related to your sanctification. Okay. All right. So is that what it's saying? That seems to be what this gospel of the Holy Twelve is saying. But like I said, some of this seems to be uh, contradictory because like when we read about over in the book of Genesis that our father actually provided everything living for our food, right. trees, plants, animals, fish. When you read the Septuagint version of the translation of this verse, it even says reptiles. Mm. So turtles, snakes, and alligators are on the menu as far as our father is concerned. His only thing was that we couldn't eat the blood that was in the meat. And herein comes the confusion because some people don't understand that you can actually get the blood out of the meat. That's kind of where this class started from. We were thinking of ways we could get the blood out of the meat so that we can partake of this meat um, legally. But... There are some who seem like to want to swing to veganism or vegetarianism altogether, and they're using this gospel of the Holy Twelve to do so. I call it the vegetarian gospel because it seems like that's what the book is all about. So is this um, what people are saying that we should no longer eat meat, uh, therefore be uh, vegetarians? Is it just based off that one one uh, verse or are there this others? one book no this book here is based off this book no other scripture have i found ever no scripture have i found ever that supports the idea of not eating meat like we said that would be contradictory to uh the first book of the bible genesis which says that he put this food down here for us to eat now what kind of god do we think we serve who in the first book of the bible would say um all all living creatures, plants, animals, and otherwise are there for your food in the first book of the Bible and allow us to read and understand it is for thousands of years. And then here at the very end of his seven day plan, somebody discovers this so-called gospel of the Holy Twelve that finds out, oh, you weren't supposed to be eating meat the whole time. Yeah, it sort of doesn't make sense because, you know, he gives us, he it, it says in scripture that we are to eat the clean meat mm -hmm. and we're not supposed to eat the unclean, unclean meat. meat. You know, yeah. if it was that we're not supposed to eat meat at all, what is the purpose of separating the clean and the unclean? Yeah, that kind of brings me to this uh, next time that we see the word meat listed here in this book. And, and that's over here in Lectern 7 or Chapter 7 when it's talking about John the Baptist. And look what it says about him down in verse 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a girdle of the same about his loins. 
and his meat was the fruit of the locust tree and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan, and they were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. You know, does something look strange there, too, when it's talking about John? Well, in um, scripture that we know of, uh, it talks about locusts as far as like the grasshopper and things like that. But now it's talking about the locust tree. So one could actually point to that as another contradiction. Because when we come to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 4, it doesn't say a tree that he was eating from. It says that he was, matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 4. Okay. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. So this is saying that he's eating locusts, not of the locust tree, but the locusts. Right. I think a lot of people are also getting where the... Uh, scripture, the King James, takes liberty and uses the word meat sometimes for vegetables. Yeah, but that's what we're talking about. We're talking yeah. about flesh here because he used the word flesh meat here. So, yeah, that would add another level of confusion, but I don't think those people will be trying to use it as their excuse. Again, it seems as though they're focusing on flesh meat. They don't right. want to eat sheep and lamb and goats and stuff like that. Maybe even locusts, which is considered a clean animal, because when we come over to Leviticus 23, locusts are actually included in the list of clean animals and stuff we can eat. Matter of fact, read verse 22. Even these of them you may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. These are clean animals. There's people around the world who eat grasshoppers and beetles. I'll want to one day become one of these people that can actually raise these animals to eat. Um, because the Bible says that they're clean. You know, and John the Baptist was out there understanding this, was actually eating these grasshoppers that we call locusts. Yeah, I'm not quite understanding... Um how we are are saying that we're not supposed to eat meat because simply you know like we gave the example of he separated and told us that we can eat these clean meats and then you know we read in scripture also how he tells us to prepare the meat so that we can eat them yeah, eat even it. having so a I'm whole festival understand. around cooking meat yeah, the very first festival feast passover is about killing and eating meat but you also have the people that do similar when it comes to the virginity of the 144,000. Yeah. You have, to, you have to remember that the very first commandment of the Bible, all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, was to be fruitful and multiply. Right. Yet in the last book of the Bible, you find out that those who want to be considered one of the 144,000 will now be penalized for being fruitful. That don't make sense. And also, um, you can think about it this way, too, that in Scripture, throughout Scripture, there isn't, from my understanding, I'll say that, where there is a focus for a man to be a virgin. Yeah, there's and never. And now, all of a sudden, he tells us and penalizes the man um, for being uh for having, for having, um, for having, having children, yeah. making babies or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that don't make sense. And, you know, a lot of people want that in their psyche, thinking that our God somehow plays games with us like that. You know, he, he tells us to do one thing and then later on we find out that it was a trick. Well, they use that to justify their disobedience, to justify their rebellion, saying that God changes this and he changes that. I mean, it's down to the crux of the matter when people say that the Messiah did away with the commandments. You know, that, that's the kind of stuff they want to they want to say. Is that, you know, our father started off with the commandments and then the Messiah came and changed everything. Well, that's the same kind of stuff they're saying with with the virginity of the 144,000 saying that our father told us to make babies. Now we're being penalized for it. And he told us to eat meat. Now we're going to be penalized for that. Well, that's not the kind of God that I serve. We just need to get in tune with what the scripture actually says. 
so that when translators like this guy here comes around and starts to add stuff to the scripture, it can be easily identifiable. That's, that's what we call discernment. Anytime you tell a lie, it's going to stick out like a red flashing light on the page. It's just not going to fit well with the other scripture. And that's how you're going to know that something's wrong. Either, like I said, with our own understanding or with the translator, if this is scripture itself, it, this like I'm still wondering where this book came from, but until I find out, then I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's, it's our understanding, and it is the translator who has taken these extra liberties to confuse us with this gospel. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, we are so excited about the scripture, and when a new to us scripture comes along, we easily want to jump on the I guess I don't want to say the bandwagon and you know follow behind that scripture, but you know, I guess you have to you have to have that discernment and make that decision and also pray about it to see if it's legitimate scripture or not. We just can't, you know, go with every scripture that that comes along. You know, I say that with, you know, the third testament, but you know, having discernment and things just um it lets you know that it's true, but we just have to be careful. Um, because we all myself included, can be misled by different scripture because we want to find out more and more and more about our Father. So we're eager to to jump on to other scriptures. Plus you have some of us who are a part of those stones. You remember the stones of Hermas who were cast into the desert places in the wilderness? Those are people who are looking for other paths. The gospel of Mark, Luke and John is not suitable for them. So they, you know, go off and start looking for other scripture or other doctrine or other things that, to to support their religion. You know, the scripture is not good enough for them. It may not be those who are looking for this gospel of the Holy Twelve. But, you know, you see people who will go off and they'll start um, entertaining uh, some of the other um, doctrines of the world, for instance, um, Scientology. So, yeah, stuff like that. And these are people who are searching for their own path. Right. The path that's laid out for them doesn't seem right, I guess, for them. And so they'll start searching for other paths. And when they come across this translation okay. of the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, well, now they latch in on it. Yeah. The, the yeah, they start to latch in on it. Um, yeah, scripture tells us to remain on the old path, to not get off the old path. So uh, when these new um, tra uh, translations and scripture come along, we just have to be extra careful and weigh them up against um, the scripture of the old path. And it's kind of it gets a little bit dangerous because it's these scriptures actually start to make people question the other gospels. Like you said, we were told to follow the gospel that we were given for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then you see these other gospels. And the first thing they do is start bringing in the question. I had one person that even wanted to toss out the other gospels, even came as far as saying that they were wrong because they contradicted this so-called gospel of the Holy Twelve. And I said, well, what are you talking about? And this is what they came out where this particular verse right here says that the Messiah was uh, 49 years old when he died. I do, I do like how they're getting closer to the name of the Messiah here in this book. And, you know, that's how, you know, man does. He always adds some truth into everything. But you see here it's saying that, that he was uh, 49 years old when he died. And we understand that he was closer to 33. Right. You know, so when they read the book of Luke, which says that he was 30 years old when he started his ministry, it lasts for three and a half years. He was about 33 years old when he died, somewhere around then, 30 to 33 years old. We see this book, which says that he was 49 years old. And then we start to question the legitimacy, not of this book, but the other books. Right. You know, we start to throw out those books and saying Matthew, Luke, saying Luke didn't know what he was talking about. We don't even know who this book was written by, this Gospel of the Holy Twelve, but somehow it was making us question Luke. Right. And then and once we start, go ahead. I was going to say, once you start questioning that, you can now question the entire scripture. Yeah, you can throw the whole thing out. You know, all it takes is is uh, one or two contradictions that you, makes you question the entire scripture. Where here is one right here, simply in the age. And then here's the bigger one when it's talking about this whole meat thing. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another one. 
Um, there's a few more times we see the word meat, uh, meat used in this context over here. Um, if you would, I know it's kind of hard to read these small letters, but if you would read that verse right there. Okay. The robber who breaketh into the house made by man is guilty, but they who break into the house made by God, even of the least of these, are the greater sinners. Wherefore, I say unto all who desire to be my disciples, keep your hands from bloodshed and let no flesh meet. Enter your mouths, for God is just and bountiful, who ordained that man shall live by the fruits and seeds of the earth alone. So here you have the Messiah telling us what it takes to become a disciple. Now talking about eating of meat. So why did he leave this out of all four Gospels? Isn't this important? How many people will now feel scandalized by this because you told us, the Messiah told us to keep the Passover every year and never miss it, but yet we're going to be found penalized. We can't even be his disciple because we partake in meat? Yeah, that would be unfair. It would, be, it would not be just for our father to trick us and um, do, the, do that to us. Yeah, but like I said, there's some. There's some who actually want to believe this is who we're dealing with. We're dealing with this deceiver, you know, who is going to do just that. Tell us one thing, and then when we do it, we're going to get in trouble for it later. This kind of supports what they want to believe. Like I said, it supports their lifestyle. They can now go on justifying any and everything they do because this is who our father is. He's the, he's a deceiver. Basically, equating him with Satan. He's, a, right. he's like the devil. Right. Well, this is not the case at all. If there's any deception going on whatsoever, I, I'm going to blame it on this translator here. You know, my mind isn't playing tricks on me, but there's something, you know, fishy going on about this particular translation of this writing here. This particular uh, lection here even goes on to talk about the Messiah and his partaking of the... Um, sacrificial lamb saying that he didn't partake which like we said earlier this puts him in conflict with the scripture this puts him in conflict with the statutes which says that we have to partake in this passover lamb we don't really have a choice mm -hmm. yeah he directly told you know the angel directly told um moses to tell the people how to prepare this lamb you know before they left Egypt. Um, so what was the purpose of that scripture even being written if it was just untrue? It's yeah. the deception. Yeah. So I didn't explain this to be an exhaustive search. Like I said, I've read a, a, a few chapters or a few lecterns out of this book, and I found many contradictions all associated with this meat. So if I did a search for the word flesh, we would have many, many more um, verses to point out on how it's, saying this particular book is saying that we're not supposed to eat meat. This is what I call the vegetarian gospel. You don't find this in any other book, gospel or not, in any apocryphal, Dead Sea Scrolls, anything, nothing ever, no other book ever tells us not to eat meat. None. This is it. Mm -hmm. You know, this. there may be 600 books of scripture out there, and this is the only one that I've ever read that says anything like this. This is why I call it the... the uh, vegetarian gospel right i'm also thinking about how when they were out in the wilderness how the father sent all of the um, birds to the yeah, people he gave them food and yeah. he gave them that food and you know so i don't i'm not those quite quail, understanding. Those meat yeah, yeah told them they have meat coming out of their nose yeah. yeah some of those people he did that you can say well he did that because they were just being greedy and they were unrighteous and all that kind of stuff so now he said okay here you want the meat eat the meat but some of those people were just some of those people were righteous and mm -hmm. why would he he you know deceive those people as well manipulate them as well. No, he's I'm put this. He's put this food here for our consumption. Um, there are some people in the world who all they get to eat is meat. You can imagine living in a place like Alaska where you can't grow greens and stuff, and so you heavily dependent on meat to eat. And our Father has put this here for us. Um, but you know, people who want to partake in a vegetarian lifestyle, you know, I think that they should be allowed to do so. But to say that. 
scripture tells us not to eat meat that is um that's not yeah if they want to be that way in their life that's fine but don't you know come digging up scriptures that you're gonna now roll up and hit me in my head with because i eat meat you know um that may work for some people but you know it's just not scriptural yeah it's not it's it's something's wrong with that book. I'm not gonna say that the I'm not gonna blame the author of the book, but I am gonna blame the translator and our own understanding. Um, it's gonna take some work to get used to or get our understanding from that gospel of the Holy Twelve. Just reading it for what it is from that particular translator, I'm gonna say is is error, is folly. It may be a good book, but you're gonna have to find a better translator. You're gonna have to find a better translation of that book, else it's gonna lead you astray. Have you questioned, you know, Genesis and Luke and every other scripture? Um, have you? Yeah, not only that, questioning all the patriarchs because it clearly states that, you know, Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, yeah. David, all yeah. of them. We have examples of everybody, every man, almost we have an example of every man in the Bible eating meat except for Adam and Elijah. Those two and Adam because, you know, Abel, who was the raiser of these animals, was killed early, and Elijah, you know, the birds didn't bring him any meat. They brought him bread or whatever. But even with that, we can't say that he didn't eat meat. It's just, it's not listed. But like you said, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Solomon, um, Noah, Shem, Cain, Abel, yeah, the, man of the Messiah, the disciples, the men of war, Joshua, all of these people, we could point to examples where they actually ate meat in the Bible. So to somehow say now that we aren't supposed to, well, you know, that's kind of like those people who say that we all are automatically supposed to become virgins now if we want to go to heaven. And what was the purpose of them raising sheep? Yeah. If they weren't going to eat them. I mean, what, is, what else are they good for? Why yeah, they I have... said that before. Somebody jumped all over oh, me. Okay. There's some animals here. Yeah, like they, they, they seem saying, to they only be here for food. thousands and thousands of animals. Yeah, why, why would, would they you, be? Yeah, why would you just. They might have had millions of cattle of yeah, animals. Why would they. You travel all these feed them yeah what i don't understand making sure they got water and taking yeah. care of if they just i don't know they what? were just pets yeah. millions and millions of pets no they were yeah. eating this okay food. so i understand why you're saying somebody jumped all over you if they're saying that yeah because they're a pet yeah okay they can be a pet yeah but you know so well no what i said was there's certain there's certain animals here who have no other function besides meat right what other job does a, a sheep have Mm -hmm. He's what other purpose does he have besides eating your grass? I mean, you can use him for a lawnmower if you don't want to cut your grass. You can get him out there and let him, you know, eat your grass down for you. But other than that, what what purpose is he? And us being owners of sheep, you know, they can be a lot of trouble. They are trouble. So, a lot uh, of work. Yeah, a lot of, a lot work, of money so. you're spending on this mm -hmm. just to have a lawnmower. A lot of people say, you know, I buy a lawnmower. I ain't getting no sheep messing all over the yard and all that. No, he's there for food. He's there for our food. And come Passover, we're going to find out, you know. Yeah. All right. So, guys, we're going to run out of things to say, obviously. So, we're going to go ahead and close this video out. If you got any questions or anything, please put them in the comment section. Go ahead and hit that like button. Make sure you subscribed. And. Hello. Shalom.